I was so broken. I was so empty and I just wanted it gone. Like somehow if somebody hear me, talk to me, I'm, I'm crying for help and I don't want this lifestyle anymore. I kind of laughed at myself. Like how could I say something like that, that going to jail was the best thing that happened to me, but it was. The kinds of residents who come to Buffalo Sage are typically Aboriginal women who are doing a federal sentence. Most of them have serious crimes. Many of them, this isn't the first time in jail. They come to us often in the process of figuring out who they are as Aboriginal women. The philosophy behind our agency in all of the programs we deliver is founded on the teachings we have from our elders. That everybody was an innocent child. Something happened to them. The community, their family failed them. And as a society, we have an obligation to help rebuild their lives. Good public safety is about giving people the right tools to heal. A healing journey is simply the beginning of making yourself a better person. That's what it's really all about. It's as simple as that. Like it hasn't been an easy journey to get to Buffalo Sage to do this program. And I just wish that. For some, actually for many, when they hear about the warrior program, it frightens them. Are they going to be judged? And they're kind of standoffish. For some, they'll think, you're not going to get through to me. I have that one of runaway feeling right now. Just that little bit brought up stuff, but I got to learn to not run away anymore. I'm tired of running. We're going to start on your inner child. That's where the story starts. You'll be traveling from your head to your heart. The work that we do in the warrior program is very intensive. It is likened to peeling back the layers of an onion. We expose different things that have happened in our lives through group work and through discussion. I have boundaries there. Like this program is more verbal. It's not all about writing and stuff. It's more verbal. So that really helped me to come out of my shell and to talk more and express my feelings. We were doing some of the sessions. It was like, took me back to a place where I had wounds that I didn't even know that I still had. Inside, you dream about how it's going to be on the outside. You dream that everything is going to be so nice. And usually, they're wrong. <laughs> Things have changed. And I've seen this firsthand where people are so disappointed that they just go off the deep end. These ladies need a home base. They need, they need roots. They need to know where they're from. We believe that before any of the crime happened and before any of the violence might have happened that put them in jail, we believe they were first and foremost victims, that their identity and who they are is bound up in the victimization that they incurred as children. I had a lot of grief and loss, shame, what they don't know won't hurt them, keeping my secrets inside. I wasn't ever going to be vulnerable to anybody. I was never going to feel that kind of pain ever again. And the drugs helped me keep that mask on for a long time because I didn't feel anything. 
So I had no emotions to, you know, I guess be human. I wasn't even human. I didn't really care about myself. And in turn, how do I care about other people and I'm not even caring about myself? I hurt a lot of people, including my own children. I was a victim and I became a perpetrator. Almost every single one think it's their fault. It's their fault that they were victimized. They did something wrong. When you were born, God breathed the, your first breath into you. So you got God in you and you are good. We have to tell them that they're good. They don't believe it. And it'll be a long time before they really get it, before they really believe that they are worthwhile and they're lovely. At one time, probably when I was about six, is when I decided frozen feelings stepped in, where I wasn't gonna allow anything to, to feel anything or to hurt. Once I started learning things about myself, I thought, well, I'm normal. It's just I wasn't taught properly. And especially for us that have uh, gone through residential school or our parents have been in residential school, it really messes us up. I took Spirit of Your Warrior. It was one of the best programs that I've taken because it helped me to deal with a lot of the abuse that I went through as a child and also understand like the family issues surrounding residential school. With the historical part, that's so important because they start understanding themselves, where they came from, what their parents went through. No wonder this is what happened in our home. It's like I can breathe again. It's like, like I was going through life holding my breath all the time. I had a like a shame-based attitude and I had a lot of guilt and remorse for what I did. It was really um, exciting because I never talked so much in my life about my upbringing, about my whole life. It was nice to just validate all that pain and all that. Just I honored those feelings instead of just trying to fight them. A big part of the healing work that we do is working to help them to see how this identity of victimization was developed, how that may have turned into a perpetrator of violence, you know, the change from victim to perpetrator, and then what happens after that? You know, if you're not a victim and you're not a victimizer, what comes next? Residing at Buffalo Sage, I've had the opportunity to like get involved with work release program that's been there. So my day consists of like getting up at five o'clock in the morning, getting ready, and I get on the bus in the morning. So I go to work by seven. I have to call in like 12 o'clock every day, to let them know I'm at work. I'm working full time. I've been there now for over a year. It's really positive and the support is phenomenal. There's nothing better than getting a job. For some of them, all the certificates and all of the prereqs that they need, being able to pay your own bills and being able to take care of yourself. You know, I was lucky and fortunate enough that Buffalo Sage had supported me to get my own place. I felt this stability probably six months after I moved into my place and I knew exactly what I wanted. My hobby is making star blankets and I also sew. It pays for my internet, it pays for my phone, it pays for like anything extra that I want. So if I really want it, I need to work to get it. The whole point of the Buffalo Sage Wellness House was to ensure that we created a safe space where women could heal could gradually and slowly and safely reintegrate into the community and build community connections. I've countered like having privileges of going home back to Manitoba on a trip, and I've had to pay for that myself, which was a great opportunity because it brought more responsibility and also to gain trust. 
I like it here because they have the open door policy if you need to talk. They're always willing to listen and help you if they can anyway, and I haven't been in a, an environment like that before. I guess the staff watching me change and stuff, they saw like, you know, when I doubted myself, they were there to remind me like, you are doing good, you've come so far, like, don't give up now, right? And somebody believing in them and treating them with kindness. Having Vicky there is very good because in the middle of the night, if you're going through something, then she's there, she can, you know, be a good support. She's there four times a week, and then she's gone home to her private home for three days. So she does stay at Buffalo Sage, so she's a 24-hour elder there. I think that the women at Buffalo Sage need their family. She's definitely been my inspiration to change. I can actually role model to, to Chloe how to be a good person and like instill those things that like I never had when I was a kid. So yeah, I think I'm gonna, no, I know I'm gonna be a good mom. Everything I'm doing for myself and healing and moving forward in my life is just a way of giving back and showing that people can change their lives around. I know the big part is spirituality. That's what turns them around. But just being able to connect with a lot of elders, I had the opportunity to Sundance this year. If they can connect in ceremony, if they can get that, they have a far better chance of succeeding out there. You know, it's an easy support system and it's a powerful support system. First of all, I'd like to congratulate the graduates. It's been a long journey. I kind of smile, you know, when some people say they're going into the warrior program. Oh yeah, Vicky just wants to make us cry. <laughs> it's true. And it's not true. Well, yeah, it is sort of true. <laughs> because I know once a person starts releasing, it really is healing. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. At Buffalo Sage, our residents are in that really difficult process of reconciling generations of colonial policy that have affected their parents and their grandparents and their great-grandparents, as well as reconciling their own family relationships every day. In my mind, the residents of Buffalo Sage are on the front lines of reconciliation. I think the real tragedy is that women have to go to prison to be able to experience the spirit of a warrior program, to be able to get employment help, to address their addictions. And we have a moral and ethical duty to provide programming for women before they're incarcerated, for children before they're apprehended. This could be a community movement, a community strategy, instead of an incarceration strategy. <laughs>